All right, guys, Cutterboy32 here, check it out, sitting there in the home office. I'm going to do a video on the, uh, what do you call that, HR6666. But before we do that, I'm going to put a link down below. Real good friend of mine, his wife was diagnosed with stage 3 cancer, and they are financially strapped right now. And it's a GoFundMe page for his wife. Uh, and if you have a couple dollars to spare, it would mean the world to me if you go down there, take a look at it, uh, look at her photo. And, uh, yeah, if you could help him out, it would mean a lot to me. Okay. I'd really appreciate it. So anyway, let's get on with the, uh, <laughs> the house resolution six, 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 six. Here we go. Uh, I've received a ton of emails, both in Instagram, uh, and my email address, codeaboy32 at gmail.com, uh, concerning this new house resolution six, 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 six. And thank God there's four sixes in it, right? Uh, so I kind of held back because one of the things I, I don't want to do is I don't want to overreact. A lot of that going on these days, especially when it starts, we're talking about this COVID thing. I mean, a lot of people think it's a conspiracy. A lot of people think me personally, I think it was China trying to get back at us for all the uh, stuff that Trump did. <laughs> I don't know. Who am I? But anyway, you got Dr. Fauci over there uh, talking about to Congress today uh, about what if we open up the country too soon. And I, I would like to have somebody counteract that with what if we don't open the country soon enough? What's going to happen then? Uh, people who have small businesses are going broke. The country can't give away all the money it has. I mean, there, there's a, one thing. If, if we provide money to people who need it now or companies, uh, it's only coming from the people who are paying taxes. So it's just a cyclical effect here. It does nobody any good. But the fear is, is that while we're trying to provide and, and make sure that people have enough money to eat, we're basically starving ourselves to death. So there's going to come a time where we're going to have to go back to work. We're going to have to accept the risk. I mean, every day you go to uh, Walmart or you go to your local Harris Teeter or, or whatever grocery store you go to, you're accepting the risk that uh, in order to feed my family, I got to go buy food. Well, there's another step to that that's called going to work. Yeah, so there's a lot of frustration going on. Uh, a lot of people uh, acting on this stuff. And you know what? Kudos to everyone who's going out there, especially those guys out in Michigan who have their guns. Sean Hannity, kiss my ass. So anyway, one of the things we want to talk about is HR 6666, because there's a lot of people who are reading into this thing. They're reacting wrong. And if you don't, uh, if you don't agree with me, please write it in the comments section down below. Let's have a dialogue about this thing. So anyway, this thing was introduced by a congressman out of the first district of Illinois named Bobby Rush. Now, Bobby, there's a picture right there. Bobby's a unique kind of guy. So what I did was I'm going to read this, paraphrase some of the stuff, but I'm going to read it directly to you. Uh, today, you, this is as of May 1st. Today, U.S. Representative Bobby L. Rush introduced H.R. 6666, the COVID-19 testing, reaching and contacting everyone, or other words called the TRACE Act. This bipartisan bill, now let me interrupt here. If you look at all the people who are uh, signing on to co-sponsor this bill, there's only one Republican. Uh, and there's a reason for that, probably, down the road. We'll, we'll figure that out. The bipartisan bill would establish a grant program run by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to fully mobilize coronavirus testing contact tracing efforts. Grantees would include community health centers, school-based health centers, academic medical centers, nonprofits, and other entities who would hire and train individuals to operate mobile testing units, as well as an outreach in hot spots in medically underserved areas. I'm all about that. I think that's a smart thing. Uh, I don't think he's uh, talking about funding SWAT teams to come and raid your home in the event that somebody has uh, been uh, diagnosed or testing positive for coronavirus. Reopening our community and getting back to normal will be all but possible if we do not step up our testing efforts and implement robust and widespread contact tracing. I agree. Until we have a vaccination or a vaccine to defeat this dreaded disease, contact tracing in order to understand the full breadth and depth of the spread of the virus is the only way we'll be able to get out from underneath this. All right. So far, so good, right? Um, the COVID-19 Trace Act will allow us to do this by creating a $1 billion grant program for local organizations to hire, train, and pay individuals 
to purchase supplies. And by the way, I'm going to put all this down below. So if you don't want to hear me talk about it, it's okay. We're going to get an opinion here going on short. Um, here's the thing. I immensely proud. I am immensely proud to see this bill receive bipartisan support. And I hope to see COVID-19 Trace Act swiftly adopted by the House as a standalone bill or as part of a larger coronavirus response package. Keep it as a standalone bill. I'm sick and tired of them trying to piggyback bills in on top of some type of stimulus bill. Like next thing you know, you know, you got red flag bills being, in, you know, all this kind of crap going in there. But I think what he's trying to do is, uh, and, and he says it in here, uh, uh, with special preference being given to those operating in hot spots and medically underserved communities, as well as those entities who commit to hiring from these neighborhoods. It's kind of a stimulus package for minority communities. And the reason being is because, uh, and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. I, I don't know if I was really happy with it, but it is, the truth is what it is. Representative Rush answers these questions. What is the COVID-19 Trace Act? All right, here we go. We're going to get into questions and answering. This is going to be a good video here, guys. Stand by. The COVID-19 Testing Reaching and Contact Everyone Act is a comprehensive bipartisan bill that would establish a $1 billion grant program for local organizations to hire yeah, 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 we did that. With special preference being given to those operating in hot spots and medically underserved communities. This bill has been officially endorsed by the American Diabetes Association in Everthrive, Illinois. I don't know who they are, but I know who the American Diabetes Association is. What is contact, contact tracing? Contact tracing is not a new concept. According to the CDC, contact tracing is a core disease control measure. Uh, given that many people with coronavirus are asymptomatic, that means we're walking around and have it we don't know we have it because it's a weird disease. You go up to your old neighbor over there, shake his hand, and next thing you know, two weeks later, the dude's in a resp uh, respirator, uh, and he's uh, two weeks after that, he's dead. Uh, moreover, we are currently witnessing more frequent testing in, this is where it kind of, it's true, but it kind of irritates me, in white affluent communities, but more COVID-19 cases and deaths in low income minority communities in Illinois, even though black residents are dying of COVID-19 at more than three times the rate of the state's white population, white residents are still tested nearly twice as often. Well, what they need to do is they honestly need to go into these communities and set up testing. And the, and the individuals who are not white need to get out there and get tested. It's up to them as well. That's why we need to ramp up testing and contact tracing in these communities and other medically underserved communities as well. Who would qualify for the grants? Okay, who's going to get the money? Federally qualified health centers, school-based health clinics, disproportionate share hospitals, academic medical centers, nonprofits, uh, including faith-based organizations, high schools and universities, any other entity deemed eligible by the CDC. Does the COVID-19 Trace Act require testing? No. According to him, the COVID-19 trace is about providing testing to those who want and need it. Not everyone has the ability to visit drive through testing sites. And I agree with this. They, they need to go to these communities to help them figure out who needs to be tested. Uh, this bill would allow the testers to come to you through mobile testing units and door-to-door -door outreach as is safe and necessary for members of your own community. However, if you don't want to be tested for coronavirus, you won't don't have to be, but you should. He's saying you probably should get tested, but it's not a necessity. It's not required by law that you do this. This is not somebody going door to door telling, here, we need to have to swab you. If I test positive for coronavirus, we'll be forced to quarantine. Absolutely not. Again, these tests would be completely voluntary. The bill does not force you or your loved ones to do anything at all. With that being said, if you or a loved one does ha or does has does has the coronavirus, it is advised that you do self-quarantine and maintain social distance from others. Uh, yeah, if you have it, stay ass at home. You have, you have a duty to protect other people around you. If you're experiencing symptoms, you should contact your primary care physician immediately and look into getting tested. I saw online that the bill allows, or here's one of the things, I saw online, and we're seeing a lot of this, that the bill allows the government to enter my home and remove my children if we test positive for the virus. Is that true? Uh, this bill does not 
authorize anyone to enter your home for whatever reason without your permission, nor does it allow the government to remove anyone from your home because of the coronavirus. Okay, so that's it. Uh, one of the things I really wanted to do was kind of help clarify some of this stuff. Uh, tell you guys about it is my children in the background who don't know how to keep their voices down. Yeah. So anyway, let me know what your thoughts are down below. That's straight from Mr. Bobby Rush himself trying to answer the questions. Me, I'm about this. If you got it, stay at home. If you're scared to get it, stay your home. That's your freedom. You can do so. Let's open the country. Do your social distancing. Uh, put the damn screens up. You know, but we have got to survive as a country. Otherwise, we will not survive. And if we don't do something soon, people will starve to death. And the government can only do so much, in my opinion, to save you and me. It's up to us to save the country. Let's go to Boy32. Uh, don't forget about my buddy Dan and his wife. I'm going to put the link down below. Uh, stage 3 cancer, breast cancer. Go fund me. Don't forget, if you got a couple spare dollars, man, it would be mean a world to me if you would go take a look at that. Uh, anyway, with that being said, guys, we always end it like this. God bless America. God bless those men and women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom because freedom is not freedom. I'm talking about those men and women in uniform, just like that cop that's either been uh, put on suspension or he's fired uh, for uh, speaking out. It was a ranger. Ugh. Let's go to boy 32. I'm out. Hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. You know what I'm saying. Y'all be good. Take care.